good morning children now we'll study the next gas law that is gelugzak's law and that shows the relationship between the pressure and temperature or pressure temperature relationship this law describes the pressure temperature relationship of gases at constant volume it is also called munton's law the law is similar to charles law and is given by gelugzak it states that pressure of a fixed mass of a gas at constant volume is directly proportional to the temperature on kelvin scale mathematically p and t at constant volume at constant n and v p upon t is equal to k3 constant the value of k3 depends upon the volume of gas amount of the gas and the units of pressure let p1 be the pressure of a certain mass of the gas at temperature t1 having a volume v now if temperature is changed change to t2 at the same volume so that the corresponding pressure becomes p2 then according to the law p1 upon t1 is equal to p2 upon t2 the law can be illustrated by pressure temperature graph the plot of p versus t for a fixed mass of a gas at constant volume is a straight line and shown in figure in the given figure this plot of p versus t and constant t and n is called isometric the slope of the various isometric at different volumes are different but all these lines meet the temperature axis on extrapolation at 0 kelvin as shown in the figure now we'll study avogadro's law this law describes the volume amount relationship of gases at constant temperature and pressure it was given by avogadro in 1811 it states that equal volumes of all the gases under similar conditions of temperature and pressure contain equal number of molecules that means if we are say taking the same volume of any gas under similar condition of temperature and pressure then it will contain same number of molecules that is avogadro's law for example one mole of all gases contain 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 molecules when we take one mole of any gas then it will be having 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 molecules at the same time one mole of all the gases at 273.15 kelvin that is 0 degree celsius and one bar pressure occupy a volume of 22.7 liter this means that as long as the temperature and pressure remain constant the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of molecules or in other words the amount of the gas so mathematically we can write the volume of the gas of the gas is directly proportional to the number of molecule here and is the number of molecule when under the similar condition of temperature or pressure or when we keep the temperature and pressure constant so when the temperature and pressure is constant then we can write the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of molecules the number of molecules n is directly proportional to the number of moles because as the amount of the gas increases there is increase in the number of moles of the gases so we can say the number of molecule n is directly proportional to the number of moles and that's why we can replace this capital n by the small n small n is number of moles so we can write v is directly proportional to n when t and p that is temperature and pressure are constant then we can remove this proportionality sign we can write v is equal to k into n where k is constant of proportionality 
Now, we can use here the mass and molar mass of the gas because N is related. Number of mole is related to the mass of, mass of the substance divided by molar mass. So, if small m is the mass of the gas having molar mass equal to capital M. Small m is the mass of the gas and capital M is the molar mass of the gas. The number of mole that is small n are given as n is equal to small m upon capital M. This is the mass of the gas divided by molar mass of the gas. Or we can write V is equal to K into small m upon the capital M. Now by, by rearranging we can write capital M is equal to K into M upon V and this M upon V is you know this is called as density mass divided by volume is density. Then we can write K into D. D is the density of the gas. So and again the K is the uh, constant of proportionality. So we can write M is directly proportional to D. So the above relationship implies that density of the gas at the given temperature and pressure is directly proportional to its molar mass. So this relationship gives that the molar mass of the gas is related to the density or we can say the density is directly proportional to the molar mass of the gas. Now we derive the ideal gas equation. You study about the Boyle's law, Charles law, Avogadro's law. And now we will derive the ideal gas equation. A gas that follows Boyle's law, Charles law and Avogadro's law strictly at all condition is called ideal gas. That means the gas which obeys Boyle's law and Charles law. Uh, then this gas is called as ideal gas. It is assumed that intermolecular forces are not present between the molecules of ideal gas. Real gases follow these laws only under certain specific conditions when forces of interactions are practically negligible. In all other situations, the real gases deviate from ideal behavior. The combination of various gas laws, namely Boyle's law, Charles law and Avogadro's law leads to development of mathematical relation which relates four variables, pressure, volume, absolute temperature and number of moles of ideal gas. The equation so formulated is called as ideal gas equation. The ideal gas equation can be derived by combining Boyle's law, Charles law and Avogadro's law as follows. Now according to Boyle's law, you know V is inversely proportional to P. That is the volume of the gas, of the given mass of the gas is inversely proportional to P. And it is at constant temperature. Now the second is Charles law. The volume of the gas is directly proportional to absolute temperature or temperature in Kelvin scale and then it is measured at constant pressure that equation becomes the second equation that is for Charles law. The third is the Avogadro's law and according to Avogadro's law volume of the gas is directly proportional to the amount of gas which is represented in number of moles. So V is directly proportional to N that is the number of moles at constant pressure and temperature. In Avogadro's law, you study at the given temperature and pressure, volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of moles. Now, by combining these three laws, we can write the volume is directly proportional to N and P and inversely proportional to pressure. Or we can write PV, product of pressure and volume, is directly proportional to N and P. Now when we remove the proportionality sign from here, we can write P is equal to R N T. Where R is constant of proportionality and is known as universal gas constant. Now this equation P V is equal to R N T is called as ideal gas equation. 
This equation is applicable to any gas under those conditions when behavior of gas approaches ideal behavior. Since this equation relates four variables which are used to describe the state of any gas, it is also known as equation of a state for ideal gas. It may be noted that out of four variables, the two mainly pressure and temperature are intensive variables as they do not depend on the bulk or quantity of the gas. The other two variables that is volume and number of moles are extensive variables as they depend upon the bulk or quantity of the gas. Now we will study the combined gas laws. So when we are combining these gas laws, then we can study about the combined state that is the combining the Boyle's law and Charles law. So if temperature, volume and pressure of a fixed amount that is n mole of gas vary P1, P1 and P1 that is the first state in state 1. We can represent the temperature by T1, pressure by P1 and the volume by P1. And to it changes to second state in which the temperature changes to T2, pressure changes to P2 and the volume changes to V2 respectively. Then ideal gas equation for two states can be written as P1 V1 is equal to nr T1 because the amount of gas amount of gas is also constant. So we can write nr is equal to P1 V1 is equal to nr T1. Or we can write P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to nr that is constant. Then we can write P2 V2 is equal to nr T2. Or we can write P2 V2 upon T2 is equal to nr. So these are the constants so we can write P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2. Now we can use this formula to find out the volume of the gas in a particular temperature and pressure. If the P1, V1 and P1 is given, P2 and T2 is given, then we can find out the volume of the gas. Because these three variables are required to describe the state of a gas. So this is the combined formula. So this we can use to solve the numerical based on the combined gas equation. Density and molar mass of gaseous substance. We have studied in unit 1 that the number of moles n of substance is related to the molar mass as n is equal to W upon m. W is the mass in gram. Substituting this value in the ideal gas equation, we can get the relationship between density and molar mass. So we can write here the PV is equal to nRT. Then N is converted into W upon MRT. Now we can write here P is equal to WRT upon molar mass into volume. Now we rearrange that is W upon V is the density. So we can write P is equal to DRT upon M where M is molar mass and D is the density of the gas. So D is equal to W upon V. Then we can write P is equal to DRT upon M where M is the molar mass. Nature of the gas constant R. In order to understand the significance of R, let us examine the nature of quantities in the ideal gas equation. We can write PV is equal to nRT or R is equal to PV upon nT. Now we can put the um, unit for the pressure and volume. So we can write here pressure into volume upon mole into temperature. Now we can write the value of the pressure. Pressure is force divided by area. So we can write here R is equal to force upon area into volume and the whole is divided by moles into temperature. Now area we can write L square. Force upon L square into 
वॉल्यूम इज एल क्यूब अपॉन मोल्स इन टू टेम्परेचर देन वी कैन राइट दिस इज इक्वल टू फोर्स इन टू लेंथ अपॉन मोल्स इन टू टेम्परेचर बिकॉज द एल स्क्वायर विल बी कैंसल्ड सिंस फोर्स इन टू लेंथ इज इक्वल टू वर्क एंड एनर्जी सो वी कैन राइट आर इज इक्वल टू वर्क अपॉन मोल इन टू टेम्परेचर दस आर रिप्रजेंट्स वर्क डन पर डिग्री पर मोल सिंस वर्क कैन बी एक्सप्रेस इन डिफरेंट सिस्टम्स ऑफ यूनिट्स आर विल हैव डिफरेंट न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यूज इन डिफरेंट सिस्टम्स सो ना विल सी द न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू ऑफ गैस कॉन्स्टेंट आर द न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू ऑफ आर डिपेंड्स अपॉन द यूनिट्स इन विच प्रेशर एंड वॉल्यूम आर एक्सप्रेस Let us calculate the value of R for one mole of gas at STP conditions when pressure and volume are expressed in different units. The first, in SI units, pressure is expressed in pascal and volume in meter cube. On substituting the values of P, V, and T for one mole of gas at STP conditions. In equation R, then R is equal to P V upon N T. Then we will get R is equal to one zero one three two five pascal into twenty two point four one four into ten to the power minus three meter cube upon mole into two seventy three point one five kelvin. This is equal to Eight point three one four pascal meter cube per kelvin per mole, or we can write this a unit of the uh, energy that is eight point three one four four joule per kelvin per mole. Now the second condition, when pressure is expressed in bar, expressed in atmosphere, and volume in liters. Then R is equal to one liter into twenty two point four liters upon mo one mole into two seventy three point one five. Then it is equal to zero point zero eight two liter atmosphere per kelvin per mole. When pressure is expressed in bar and volume in decimeter cube, we know that one mole of any gas at one bar pressure. And two seventy three point one five Kelvin new STP conditions occupies a volume of twenty two point seven decimeter cube or twenty two point seven liter. Then R is equal to one bar into twenty two point seven upon one mole into two seventy three point one five, and this is equal to zero point zero eight three. In CGS. Unit the pressure is expressed in dynes per square centimeter and volume in cubic centimeter. Then R has the units ergs per degree per mole or calories per degree per mole for one mole of a gas at one atmosphere and two seventy three point one kelvin. We have pressure is equal to seventy six centimeter length of mercury column. One atmosphere is equal to seventy-six centimeter into thirteen point five nine six into nine eighty point six. That is h rho g, and then it is equal to one zero one three two five zero gram per centimeter per second square. That is one zero one one three two five zero nine centimeter minus two. Density of mercury is thirteen point five nine six gram per centimeter cube, and G is equal to nine eighty point six centimeter second minus two. Volume is equal to twenty two thousand four hundred cc. Temperature is two seventy three point one five Kelvin. Then R is equal to one zero one three two five zero nine cent per centimeter square, and twenty two thousand. Four hundred cc. That is the volume divided by mole and the K two two seventy three Kelvin. Then it is equal to eight point three one four into ten to the power seven arcs per Kelvin per mole. Further, we know 
that 4.183 into 10 to the power 7 arg is equal to 1 calorie. So we can write the value of r is equal to 8.314 into 10 to the power 7 divided by 4.183 into 10 to the power 7 is equal to 1.99 calories per Kelvin per mole that is equal to 2 calories per Kelvin per mole. It may be noted that although R can be expressed in different units but for pressure volume calculations R must be taken in same units as those used for pressure and volume. Now we'll solve some numerical problem based on the ideal gas equation. And the first is one mole of pure nitrogen gas at SATP conditions was put into a vessel of volume 0.025 meter cube. Maintained at the temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure of the gas in the vessel? Now volume of one mole of gas at STP is 24.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube. Now initial conditions are uh, that is V1 is equal to 24.8 into 10 to the power minus 3. P1 is equal to 1 bar and T1 is equal to 298.15 because SATP is given. And in the final condition uh, volume V2 is equal to 0 0.1 meter cube. P2 we have to find out and T2 is equal to 50 degrees Celsius that is equal to 3. 23.15 Kelvin. According to general gas equation, P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2. Then we can write P2 is equal to P1 V1 T2 upon T1 into V2. That is 1 into 24.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 323.15 upon 298.15 into 0 0.025 and it is equal to 1.076 bar. So the pressure will be 0 0.76 bar. Now the next is how many moles of oxygen are present in 400 centimeter cube sample of the gas at temperature 760 mm of Hg at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. The value of R is given 8.13 kilopascal decimeter cube per Kelvin per mole. Since value of R is given in SI unit, therefore it is necessary to express the pressure and volume in kilopascals and decimeter cube respectively. The P is equal to 76 mm that is equal to 101.3 kilopascal volume is 400 centimeter cube. That is equal to 400 into 10 to the power minus 3 decimeter cube is equal to 0 0.4 decimeter cube. Temperature is equal to 300 Kelvin. Then we have to find n number of moles. According to ideal gas equation, PV is equal to nRT. And then n is equal to PV upon RT. Then it is equal to... 101.3 into 0 0.4 upon 8.31 into 300 and then it is equal to 0 0.0162 that is 1.62 into 10 to, the power 10 to the power minus 2 mole. Now we'll do the next the density of um, 13 gaseous oxide at 1.5 bar pressure at 10 degree Celsius is same as that of dioxygen at 20 degree Celsius and 4.5 bar pressure. Calculate the molar mass of the gaseous oxide. Density of oxy dioxygen at 4.5 bar pressure and 10 degree Celsius. So D uh, density of O2 is equal to pressure into molar mass upon R into T. Then it is equal to 4.5 into 32, that is the molar mass, upon R into 283.15 Kelvin. So density is equal to 1.5 into molar mass upon R into the density of oxide is equal to 
pm upon rt 1.5 into m upon r into 293.15 kelvin now density of oxygen equal to is equal to density of oxide so we equalize it so then it is equal to m is equal to 4.5 into 293.15 into 32 upon 283.15 into 1.5 is equal to 99.39 gram per mole next is density of a gas found to be 5.46 gram per decimeter cube at 27 degree celsius and 2 bar pressure what will be its density at stp so d1 is equal to p1 m upon rt1 d2 is equal to p d2 m upon rt2 now we compare d1 upon d2 is equal to p1 t2 upon t1 p2 or d2 is equal to d1 t1 p2 upon p1 p2 substituting the values we have d2 is equal to 5.46 into 300 kelvin into 1 bar upon 2 bar into 273.15 which is equal to 2.998 or 3 gram per decimeter cube